It's funny because I was never taught this. I never heard this when I was younger. If what you're doing doesn't light you up, it's not meant for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what millionaires focus on to become wealthy. Now, this is an interesting thing because there's three things that I'm gonna to cover today that you may have never heard people cover when they talk about people who are successful, they talk about people who are wealthy, they talk about people who are millionaires, and I'm gonna talk about some things that I don't really ever hear people talking about. And a lot of people that I see that make videos on this for YouTube or they make podcast episodes on this, they, they talk about what actions people need to take in order to be successful. I'm not really going to talk about actions today. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the motive, you know, the, the, the mindset, the way that they work through it and kind of why they do the things that they do versus what do they do. And a lot of times I see videos that are made by people talking about the habits of wealthy people. Uh, but those people aren't wealthy. And what's interesting is sometimes they don't even know wealthy people, right? So in this episode, I'm going to talk about it. I uh, have been personally blessed enough to acquire uh, some wealth over my 35 years that I've been here. Um, and I happen to have some some really wealthy friends that I've you know picked up along the way as well. And um, I don't say those things to brag in any sort of way. I just say them because I feel like I at least can give you insider perspective as to what I did, what I focused on, but also some of my friends that have become extremely, extremely successful and extremely wealthy um, in what they focused on and what I noticed by hanging out around those people. Because the one thing that I had noticed from being young was I, I noticed that that sometimes being wealthy is demonized and like you have to screw people over and I'm going to talk about this. But as I've met more and more wealthy people, I actually find that there's some of the nicest, most charitable people that I know. And so we're going to dive into the three things that I've noticed um, that, that I've noticed from wealthy people, how they acquired that success and what the millionaires who are millionaires do in order to become millionaires. So let's dive into it. The first thing, almost across the board from people that I've met or that are extremely wealthy, is they do something that actually lights them up, which is interesting because one of the biggest misconceptions that I think people have around being successful and making a lot of money is that you have to struggle your way to success. You have to freaking hate what you do and just work and grind and work and grind and work and grind and eventually you're gonna become rich by doing it. And, and we think a lot of times that struggling is a prerequisite to success and in reality, it's not. The people that I know that are extremely wealthy, like they love what they do. Like they are uh, in, a, in, in a real sense, they are obsessed with what it is that they do in a way. And that's part of the thing that actually helps them become successful. You know, so is it hard to become successful and wealthy? Absolutely. But one interesting thing about it is that when you find something that you love and you find something that lights you up and you find something that you're passionate about, for entrepreneurs, that's fun. It's a, it's like a game more than anything else. Instead of having to struggle, it's like waking up and like, hey, what challenges am I gonna get today? Cause there's gonna be challenges, but it becomes fun. And most wealthy people that I know, they do something that they love. You know, maybe they, they really love real estate for some reason. They, they're in the, the real estate game. They really love helping people. So they end up being authors and they end up being coaches and they help people. Maybe they're, they're speakers. There's many things that they do that they absolutely love and they become successful because of that. And the reason why is because this thing gives them energy, right? It doesn't feel like it's taking energy away from them. So for me, I know personally what I'm doing right now. For you guys that are listening to the podcast, you hear me speaking into a microphone. For those of you guys that are watching on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you see me talking to a camera. I love doing this. I don't know why I love doing this. I love the way humans work. I love figuring out humans. I love you know, neurology, psychology, early childhood development. I love learning about it. And then I just love speaking about it. I would be doing this even if I didn't figure out a way to make money doing it. It lights me up. So when I get done recording four or five episodes in a row and it takes hours and hours and hours, it gets a lot out of me, but I'm actually more energized after doing it than I am before doing it because I just love what I do. It gives me energy. And the reason why that's important is because we all know to be successful, it's going to require hard work. Whether you love what you do or you hate what you do, it's going to require a lot, a lot, a lot of hard work. But what's interesting about it is when you love what you do, you are naturally going to put more work into it. Why? Because it just feels like it's part of you. It feels fully in alignment 
with what it is that I do. Like it, I feel like the podcast and all of the coaching and the stuff that I do is like my baby. It's like a, it's like a third arm. I would feel lost without it. I love what it is that I do. And I feel like I'm probably going to do this until the day that I die. Right? So I just love this. And so one of the things that that's a prerequisite for success is hard, hard work. Now, can you force yourself to do something that you absolutely hate and struggle your way to success? A hundred percent. There are definitely people that hate what they do. They're just doing it for money and they struggle with their way to success. But that sounds like it sucks. I don't know about you. I don't want to struggle my way to success. I would love to find something that I'm fully in alignment with that makes me feel like I come alive because then I'll work my ass off and it doesn't feel like work. Cliches are cliches because cliches are true. And the cliche, find what it is that you love and you'll never work a day in your life is so freaking true because it's just, it's, it's just fun. It's just fun. Like this is work for me. Like how, how blessed am I to have this as my work, right? I have friends that are, you know, very successful with real estate. They just love real estate. They love knocking houses down and flipping them and doing interior design and all of this stuff. They love that. They love the, the thrill of it. I have friends that are very successful that have become really great sales reps as well. They love the thrill of going for the sale. They love their product. So when you're thinking about this, you have to work hard in order to be successful. And once again, you can either struggle your way there if you want to, or you can love your way there. I would prefer to love my way there. So if you love something that you do, you'll never work a day in your life. It is so freaking true. And what I do, I love. My question to you is if you hate what you're currently doing in your life, can you find something that you do love? Can you find something that lights you up? If what you're doing doesn't light you up, it's not meant for you. Let that sink in for a second. If what you're currently doing to amass wealth doesn't light you up, then it's not meant for you. It's probably not the thing for you. And so you have to ask yourself, what do I feel, not think, what do I feel is right for me? What do I, what, if I were to do it, would feel in full alignment with my heart, with my soul, with what it is that I love to do. If you find that thing, no matter how weird and obscure it is, you'll put a whole lot of hard work into it. And when you put a whole lot of hard work into it, eventually it will become success. So you can work 80 hours, but it doesn't feel like working 80 hours. It gives you energy and like this is freaking fun. So the first thing that I notice with some of the most successful people I know is that they just love what they do and they've acquired massive amounts of success from it. And that's interesting because most people are like, oh my gosh, if I look at this person who's a multi, multi millionaire and you look at someone who's a millionaire or a billionaire and a lot of people are like, they've made so much money. Why don't they just retire? Because it was never about money in the first place. Hmm. Think about that for a second. It was never about money in the first place. Did they want to make money? Sure. But what it was about was that they actually love that thing that they're in, whatever it is, coaching, real estate you know, whatever. There's a whole, there's a million ways to make a million dollars. But the reason why they don't quit is because they were never in it for the money in the first place. They just love doing that thing. And when you love doing that thing, you have no problem working your ass off because it doesn't feel like work. And eventually if you work your ass off, you're going to be, get to be successful. So the first thing that I noticed that not many people talk about is they, they do something they love. They do something that lights them up. The second thing that I noticed is most extremely successful people are entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs what they do is they solve other people's problems, whether it's their problem that they've had their whole life and they want to find a solution for it, or they notice that other people are having this problem. They take on other people's problems. That's what's interesting about entrepreneurs is they, they look at other people's problems and go, huh, can I find the solution to that? Is there a hole in the market where I can go ahead and develop something or invent something or improve a service that currently exists or product that currently exists and make it better so that I serve people at a higher level, right? So entrepreneurs always solve problems in some sort of way. I'll give you a perfect example. 150 years ago, 200 years ago, people were using horseback, right? Horseback and carriage. And then somebody went, you know what? I could probably figure out a way to transfer people quicker. And what happened? They started developing cars. That was never a thing before, but that was a problem that they solved. And a lot of times entrepreneurs solve problems that are there. And a lot of times they solve problems that people don't even know that they have until after that product comes out. And you're like, oh my God, I've needed this my entire life. How many times has that happened to you? Right? So, you know, people didn't realize, I guess that they are like, man, yeah, I'm, I'm moving with horse. But when the car comes out, you're like, oh my God, this thing is so much better. 
And then eventually, what happened? People went, I could probably move people even faster. What if we develop this thing called a plane? And then a plane was developed, right? People become wealthy by solving problems. So if you think about it that way, what is it that you could do that would solve other people's problems? And there's a couple different avenues that you could go. Number one, you could just specifically solve people's problems. Number two, you could create a, a, a service that solves people's problems. Like maybe, you know, easy example of solving someone's problem with a service is, hey, I don't want to mow my lawn, but I'll pay someone to do it. I don't want to mess with my pool, but I'll pay someone to do it. You know, so that's that's a service. Another example is a, a product. Can you can develop a product or, you know, figure out some sort of some product or invent some product that would then improve people's lives? Or is there a product that currently exists? And this is the way a lot of people get really rich is they take a product that already exists and makes make it even better. Because when you can take a product and make it even better, well, the good thing about that is that you can take something that's already proven that people need, make it better, more efficient, and people will buy it. So that's the thing that people don't realize about very, very wealthy people. The very wealthy people that I've come across and that I know, they're very good problem solvers. So look around in your, your, your surroundings, people that you hang out around, and what do you typically hear people say that they need help with? What problems do they, do they have, right? Uh, what problems can you help people solve, right? Whether it's a service, a product, or improving a current product or current service. Start looking around your life, start trying to find that. If you're wanting to become wealthy, how can you help people solve their problems? What are the problems that are out there in the world? So that's the second thing that I noticed from very successful people. And the third thing, which is really interesting, especially when you see what people, the way that people talk about people who are quote unquote rich or, health, or rich or wealthy, is that a lot of times they usually are doing something for others. And that's the, and I don't mean by solving the problem. I mean, they actually are developing a company for others. Some of the most successful people that I know are doing it not for themselves. And here's why this is key is because once again, you have to work really freaking hard to become successful. And if you're just going for money, money is a very hollow goal. It's just like when you make it, you're like, well, well I made it right. But I don't feel better about myself when I make money. The interesting thing about humans is that humans, no matter what, they always want to do something for someone else. Like I'll give you an example. You know, when you do something for money, it gets old. When you do something for yourself, it gets old. When you do something for others, it never, ever gets old. It's just fun. It's just, there's something inside of the human brain for compassion and love that when you do something for others, it makes you feel good. And so some of the most successful people that I know are doing what they're doing because they want to help others in a, in a lot of different ways. So I'll give you an example. I have a friend um, and his whole life goal was to make a hundred million dollars, like to, to be worth a hundred million dollars. And he hit that, that number by about 45. And when he hit that number, he actually went into like a little bit of a state of depression because he was, his whole goal is to be worth a hundred million dollars. And once he hit that number, he's like, I, I'm only 45. What do I do with the rest of my life? Right? Good problem to have, you could say, right? And then he realized that his life goal was actually wrong all along. It shouldn't have been to make a hundred million dollars. It should have been to donate a hundred million dollars to charity. And so his goal from now on, he's in his fifties now, is to make enough money to donate a hundred million dollars to charity by the time he passes away. Now you don't hear about these types of things inside of the news. You don't hear about them when people are talking about it. And the reason why is because for some reason, people who have wealth become demonized, right? You've heard it. You have to screw people over in order to make money. You gotta, you know, money is the root of all evil. And are there people doing bad things for money? Yes, absolutely. But I, I don't know many of them compared to the ones I know that are just really freaking good people. And the good thing about money is if you make money, you can then do more better things with that money, right? When you're broke, you can't do a whole lot except for donate your time. But when you have a, have amassed money, you can donate that money. You can do something with it. You can build orphanages. You can build water towers and everything in, in Africa. You can help when you have money. Money is just a, a something that is used as a tool. And so, I have found, and, and it's, it's funny because I was never taught this. I never heard this when I was younger. I was always, always heard, you know, not from just my family, but just, just people in general. You hear it in the news, you hear people talk about it, is there's a demonization of people who have money. And people who have money, from what I found, do, are some of them assholes and they've screwed people over to get there? Yeah, of course. 
There are some of that, but it's a super, super small percentage. The majority of people who have money, as I've found, have really big hearts. And they've done it, and they've because of the fact they've been leading from their hearts, they've actually developed big companies, they've helped a lot of people, they've helped a lot of souls, they've you know, made charities, donated to charities, all of that stuff. Are there outliers to that? Of course, there always are, are, are outliers to that. But what I'm telling you is I am 100% sure that there are more really good people that are wealthy than not. And they tend to do really good things with that. So with that being said, like I said before, when you don't have money, you can't do a whole lot when you don't have money. But when you do have money, you can. And so that's the beautiful thing about it is that I'm here to tell you that you could be a really good person. You could be a loving person. You could be a heart-centered person. And you can make a ton of money and a ton of wealth still being that way. You don't have to screw people over. Money's not the root of all evil. None of that stuff. There's really great people who make money. And um, I don't think it's talked about enough. And I'm here to tell you that if you're a really good person, you have a really big heart, making money does not go against that. What, what goes against that is usually our psychology around money, uh, which is, you know, comes from our parents, it comes from society, it comes from people in our family, all of that stuff. And most people's psychology around money is completely screwed up. I know that mine was. Um, and, and usually it's a scarcity mindset of, I, I don't have enough, I've got I've to hoard because what if something happens? And when someone has an abundance of money and they can do stuff with it, they usually do good things with it. So I want you to realize, um, this is not me preaching from a soapbox in any sort of way of, oh my gosh, look at me, look at my friends, any of that stuff. It's just to let you know that a lot of times there's really good people who have become wealthy. And if you are a good person, it's completely cool. You can make a lot of money, you can be a really good person, and usually you can do a lot with that as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you go back and look at some of the most successful people in the world, one of the things that you'll find among 95% of them is that they've 